Joining me now from Nacogdoches, Texas, General Surgery Specialist, Dr. Charles Page. Hi, Dr. Page, welcome back. So first of all, I do wanna point out that these studies that I talked about, they're not peer reviewed yet. So I, I wanna make sure we make that clear, but yep. if and when this does happen, is this encouraging new information? What do you think? It's very encouraging information. One of the things that everybody was concerned about was the fact, can people get reinfected with the disease? And so this study that came out of uh, Seattle where they had some sailors that went out on the boat and they tested all of them with uh, not only for, for COVID, but they also tested their antibodies. And they found that those, and, and no, one had the, not, no one had the infection that they knew, but somehow it slipped through and, and, they, and COVID spread throughout the whole uh, boat. But those who had already been tested, who had negative, who had already had antibodies and already been exposed to the virus, did not get the disease. And this just confirms what we've known for years about immunology is that once you're exposed to the virus, uh, typically you're, I mean, you don't get the virus again. And that's good news. Mm -hmm. so, so what does this mean? What do these developments mean in regards to what we're hearing about a vaccine that's being developed right now? So first of all, we're already in stage three trials of the vaccine. And so, you know, we're already way ahead of that. This really uh, is probably not going to affect so much uh, the development of a vaccine. But we know f the good news is, is that once people, uh, if, if, if they do respond to the vaccine, then that should fix the problem. Well, and, and then let me ask you this, because I, I saw this and it's something that seems to be confusing some people. There's still this other discussion being had about herd immunity and when the U.S. Yep. will reach that, what it's going to take to reach that. Recently, the former FDA commissioner, Scott Gottlieb, said that the U.S. is yep. quite a ways away from reaching herd immunity. But then we're also seeing all these reports that there's cases continuing to pop up and, you know, even even data that supports the fact that there were probably cases here before we even knew it. So how is that possible? How can you have these two ideas running uh, parallel to each other? Well, science is not always as objective as everyone thinks it is. So, um, and there are two uh, different thoughts about that. First of all, if you think about this, there are some scientists that say that the number of people who have probably been infected with coronavirus is 10 times what we're, you know, kind of what we're measuring. So if we were at about, what, 5.4 million people with known COVID disease, that may be 50 million people. Now, I don't think anybody has a good answer as far as how many, what percentage of the population has to uh, obtain the virus before we reach herd immunity. We know the higher that percentage goes, the more herd immunity we'll have. But I don't think anybody really has the answer to that question. If you had to put a timeline to it, do you think that would be achievable within the next three months, six months? What are your thoughts on that? Hopefully by Christmas, I think we'll 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 get there. You know, if we get like we talked about. But if we do get a vaccine and we're able to vaccine those who are at high risk, it will definitely accelerate that process. But I think we're I think we're three to six months out. OK, so and, and that at least and, and like I've mentioned before, all, all this information changes up. So it's it's certainly good to be flexible yep. and, and keep a yep. keep an open eyes and ears on the new information that's coming in. But I want to talk about this also. A, a lot of people have been talking about the fact that. These, these facts, these this science has been highly politicized the, the closer and closer you get to the election. So do you yep. think a lot of this science is being ignored by some lawmakers to push a certain agenda from what you're seeing out there, especially because you have a medical background? You know, I do. There's there's still a lot of hype that people are hearing. I, I call it coronaphobia. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of the media is trying to scare people to death. And yes, people are dying with the disease and it is real. But, you know, we got to still look at the numbers. The mortality is so much less than what we thought it was, you know, six months ago. And I, I think people have to keep in mind that we live in a, you know, we live in a society of arbitrary absolutes. And so, um, you know, everyone filters this scientific data based upon their worldview. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing a lot of that. I mean, we're seeing, for example, uh, you know, the government is is really pushing the masks and there's really not a lot of science to really suggest that masks are any are, are any benefit, you know, in, you know, in a community. We don't have a lot of studies to prove that. Mm -hmm. But yet, on the other hand, we're throwing other studies under the bus, like, for example, the, the Detroit studies, you know, Henry Ford about the hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. 
Those are not, you know, prospective randomized studies. So we're going to, those, all those are the best, but yet we're going to use this other set of data, which is really even worse data about masks. And so, you know, it's, I, I believe, I believe there is a lot of politics going on here and a lot of people interpreting data based upon their worldview. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.